and even uh, Massey and, and uh, British Petroleum you know, are, are setting an example for the public of what it means if Sarah Palin and Glenn Beck and the Tea Party rankers uh, were to have their way and shrink government down. If the issue is not small government, the issue is good government, right? fundamental change has taken place, and that's this. The debate has shifted. I mean, two years ago, we were talking about their agenda, the privatization of Social Security and et cetera. But now, at least our issues are on the table. Single-payer health care, affordable housing, clean energy, affordable student loans, restructuring Wall Street, climate change, green jobs. All of these are on the table. Obviously, we're not getting the real reform in those areas that we want yet, but at least that's what we're talking about. For the first time in a long time, and I see a few folks here as old as I am, and you'll think back, when is the last time we even had the chance to make big progressive change in America? Not under the eight years of Bush, not even under the eight years of Clinton, to be honest. Not under Daddy Bush, not under Rodney Reagan. You really go, got to go back to Lyndon Johnson to find the chance to make massive progress in our land. You know, I, I spent my youth trying to get Lyndon Johnson out of office, <laughs> not realizing he would be the most progressive president of my lifetime. <laughs> so. Having the chance to make this change, it doesn't come along very often. Not more than once or twice in a lifetime. I think you and I have a particular responsibility to get off the lazy boy and push harder than ever. George Bernard Shaw, about a hundred years ago, said you don't make progress by standing on guard, but by attacking and getting well hammered yourself. The fact that I used to be six foot five will give you some idea of something I said. I've been in. This is why your organization, Massachusetts Senior Action, your organized efforts with unions, with issue groups, with progressive churches, with civic outreach across the board, is so essential. They say the first job of a citizen is to keep your mouth open. We're pretty good at that. But it helps that that mouth is attached to a brain. <laughs> and that's what you bring. By teaming up together, you provide the information and insight, the connection and the courage for ordinary people to connect their brain power to mouth power, which then connects to foot power, which produces political power. I, I compare great organizations like this, and by the way, they're you're not alone all across the country. Just about every place has got a zip code. Not as good as you are, not as organized and as experienced, but nonetheless, people are striving out there. And there are organizations trying to put together those coalitions. And I, I compare them to a little hardware store near my home in Austin, Texas. It's, a, it, it's not maybe half the size of the, this room right here, not one of those big box things. It's called Harold's Hardware. Uh, and it's a wonderful place. You can go into Harold's and you don't have to buy that whole box of nails. They'll sell you two nails, you know. That's what you mean. Uh, and they'll work with you. Well, what are you trying to do? Well, I'm, I'm trying to build a lectern here. Well, let's pencil it out and see what you need. They'll loan you a tool. You can take a tool home and bring it back. And the slogan at Harold's Hardware is, together we can do it yourself. <laughs> that's got to be our slogan, right? Okay? We can't do it ourselves. But together, teaming up, as you have done here in Massachusetts, we can make it happen. We can bring big change. And that brings us to, to where we are. With Obama, we have a political regime in which I think change is possible. But let's be honest. Obama and the Democrats are only going to be as good as we make them be. That's our responsibility. some odd reason, the guy who ran from the outside and won is now trying to govern from the inside. Uh, and I can tell you from experience, I, I was much too amusing 
people in Texas was elected to two terms in statewide office down there and had my battles. I can tell you that you don't win populist and progressive victories by appeasing power elites by coming from the inside. Rather, you've got to organize people from the outside to come inside, as you do so effectively. You know, I, I grew up in a small town and I was a small guy, and so I learned early on you should never hit a man with glasses. You should use something much heavier. <laughs> and the heavy thing that we have are you, just the ordinary folks. So Obama, we've got to provide this outside strength coming in to be the counterforce to the insidious outside forces. I gotta tell you, January 2009, Obama taking the oath of office there at the Capitol, and that camera panning down the, the, the mall, and a million, two million, three million people there. It's, it's truly moving. Uh, but I had mixed emotions, you know, watching him take that oath of office. You know, they say mixed emotions is when you see your 16-year-old daughter come home from the prom with a Gideon Bible under her arm. <laughs> Here was a guy with good progressive instincts and roots. But on the other hand, I knew that here was a guy coming into Washington to be face to face with the forces of ignorance and avarice and arrogance. You can look to just a few of them. First one, 11,195. That's the number of corporate lobbyists in Washington, D.C. 11,195 corporate lobbyists. Spending $3 billion last year, corporations, on lobbying alone. 